It's a sensitive topic, but necessary to talk about. On this episode, we're going to discuss disability and politics. But before we jump in, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join our community, you can do that by joining our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us financially at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Today we're going to interview Mick Rosenthal, who is an advocate for people with disabilities in the political landscape so their voices can be heard. Mick, thank you so much for joining sure. us today. Uh, you know, we are going to be talking about disability advocacy within the political landscape. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have been involved in the political landscape for a long time and yeah. <laughs> I wanted to find out and let our audience get to know you a little bit about who you are and where your passion for political advocacy for the disability community comes from. That's a good question. Um, I would say I get my passion for politics from both my parents, um, but mainly from my mother because um, she herself has become a political activist after enjoying a great career as an actress. And um, she is deep in it right now, obviously with the upcoming uh, 2020 presidential, and she's also trying to help uh, friends of ours who are current senators stay in their current seats. So it's obviously really relevant right now. And in terms of disability and politics, are there specific issues that you feel are important that politicians address? Mm -hmm. Yes, there, there are. Um, living and working uh, in New York, as I do most days, currently I'm not there, um, given, given the <clears throat> circumstances, but, but, um, living and working there most days, um, I take the subway to work like every <clears throat> a New Yorker does. And due to my uh, disability of a cerebral palsy, though it is mild, um, and most people don't know that I have it because it is so mild. But due to it, I need to be extremely careful when walking up and down stairs. And because not every subway station in New York is ADA accessible with an elevator, the stairs are the only way you can get up or down. And I, as I think I've mentioned to you, I've had vivid dreams of getting pushed and knocked and all that fun stuff from somebody who is rushing by me and doesn't look to see that I'm actually there. And that's actually happened. Um, people have rushed by me and have not noticed that I am walking. And so I've been pushed and shoved and all that stuff. And what I would like to have um, <clears throat> our current uh, political leaders <clears throat> address and look at with a little bit more <clears throat> expediency is the transformation of the New York City subway. When we start advocating, it often starts out with our own personal struggles and frustrations right. that we have yeah. with systems. Um, right. And so for you, it's transportation. And I'm sure yeah. for a lot of people with disabilities, that is a a struggle on a day-to-day -day basis. Are there other 
issues that you feel like may not involve you specifically, but that you are very aware of with your involvement with politics since you were 10 um, or even <laughs> younger, um, you know, that you feel like this is something that's important for our leaders to look like, look at. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know how political I want to get today, but I want to say that I would love to see our political leaders, regardless of party, have a little bit more compassion when it comes to the general population of people with disabilities. Yes, there are a couple <clears throat> politicians to spring to mind. Uh, Greg Abbott, who is the governor of Texas in a wheelchair, and uh, Senator Tammy Duckworth, who is a uh, Iraq war veteran, also in a wheelchair. But um, they're within the current leadership, it seems, is is not a lot of compassion for people with disabilities. Considering there was a New York Times reporter who was made fun of by the candidate when he was running for office. So you're saying that there are political leaders who have disabilities and have personal experience with disability, and yet there's a lack of compassion for people with disabilities by them. Overall, yes, and, and, and I also think there is a lack of understanding that is wrapped up within the lack of compassion. Okay, so what would more compassion and more understanding look like? <sighs> wow, that's a question I've never been asked before. Um, I think it would start with our politicians recognizing people <clears throat> with disabilities as a crucial voting block. But yet, when it comes to election time, uh, people with disabilities are left by the wayside, pretty much. Uh, President Obama actually had people with disabilities represented in his administration. And the current administration has nobody there to give them that perspective. Creating more compassion and understanding sounds like taking into consideration perspectives that may not necessarily be your own or that you know about by surrounding yourself or your administration or your office, whether it be yep. at the local level or at the state national or national level, with people <laughs> that can offer those kinds of perspectives. Yep. Um, because it's true, yep. as a person, as a woman who's biracial and has a disability, I'm going to have a certain perspective and view of the world that someone who is able-bodied and um, who comes from a different national background has, that's different from mine. So, and it's, it's impossible to know everybody's perspective, but if you're at least right. open to having those people around you to share yeah. their perspective, that often yeah. helps. <laughs> I hope I don't sound too nerdy here, but um, as <laughs> a student, of history, I would love to see a uh, administration that looked like Abraham Lincoln's in that it was a team of rivals, which means he brought in different perspectives. Will that occur? Maybe one day it will, but that's, that's what I'd love to see. Yeah. And so with every vision, <laughs> we, you know, if we start with the vision and re-engineer that and try to identify what is it that each individual could do on a practical basis, 
Right. Because I would love for people to watch this and say, this is my takeaway and this is what I can do now in my little world now. And so right. what are some things that you would suggest to someone watching this that they can <laughs> do now in their little local area? I would suggest that they <clears throat> um, educate themselves as much as they possibly can on the perspective of people with disabilities, whether that means reading articles written by people <clears throat> who are sharing their stories about living and working day-to-day -day lives with a disability, or viewing Crip Camp, even. I think Crip Camp itself can be a great educational tool for people, whether you're fully able-bodied or not. I am someone who believes that education is power. I hope that makes sense. And so I believe that in order to have people reach compassion and understanding, they need to educate themselves. Knowledge is power, but what you do with it mm -hmm. is even more powerful than that. Exactly. So, as my friend G.I. Joe said, knowing is half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> so, um, Crip Camp, I'm so glad you brought up that movie. <laughs> Watching Crip Camp infused a pride in me mm -hmm. that I never had before regarding being part of the disability community. Right. Um, and I think it's such a powerful tool to educate and um, infuse knowledge into people, whether they're part of the disability community or not yet. Right. Um, you know, but it's, it's a powerful tool that we can learn from. Do you see it as a tool in terms of political advocacy? Crip camp happening before you were born, I am the same way. And I am incredibly lucky, like you, to have reaped the benefits. But I also think um, the other thing about Crip camp, too, <clears throat> is... Not only will it educate those that are living day to day with a disability, but it will also educate their families. And it will also educate the, <clears throat> the caregivers of those that are taking care of those people that need the extra help. So I think just to go back to that point again, Trip Camp is just a very well-rounded, solidly fantastic educational tool that will educate the whole person and all sorts of different populations. Because disability, whether you're born with it or not, can happen at any time. And it can be something that's uh, permanent, like uh, our disabilities, or it can be something that is not like a broken arm. The broken arm will heal, of course, but in the time you have the broken arm and you can't use one side of your body, you need to do things differently. And you need <clears throat> to uh, adapt and not everybody understands that. Right. And so I think that also plays into the ignorance and the stigma around disabilities. And also, to my mind, shows the lack of education. I think one other thing that most people don't seem to understand, particularly those that are uh, fully able-bodied, is that the improvements that get made for people with disabilities will benefit them as well. You're right. So when we create a society that um, meets the needs of almost the most limited, it actually benefits everybody. And going back to political advocacy, these are the changes that we want to, to, to be seen because mm -hmm. our leaders 
are more cognizant of the needs of the most mm -hmm. limited and can then create laws and policies that help support building a society where it, it becomes everybody's issue, not just the issue of the few. Right, correct. But I also think that <clears throat> unless there are more people in power who have disabilities, who can give that perspective to the lawmakers, the laws have no teeth. There has to be some sort of accountability. Mm -hmm. And there also has to be someone who can give that perspective of having a disability, whether it's visible or invisible, so that the law can actually be written in a good way. And what I mean by a good way is so that it's not full of loopholes where one class of people can take advantage of it far better than the other class. So something that I could do here in Hawaii, something that you could do in California, something one of our friends could do in New York, mm -hmm. could be to what? In, to influence this? Hmm. Could be to write letters or send emails or make telephone calls to <clears throat> um, their uh, elected representatives or if possible schedule a in-person meeting with said elected official. I know from experience that scheduling those meetings can be truly difficult but as someone who's been in the realm of politics since he was 10 um, and having learned about it over the years, um, I know that persistence is key. Persistence is key. That's a great takeaway from this interview. Um, are there certain characteristics that you feel are important to bring to the table? when approaching your local representative? One is you want to go in very calm. You, you know, you, you, you don't want to show up to your local <clears throat> council's office or your local mayor's office and immediately accuse them of something you actually want to hopefully be able to sit down with them and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about whatever issue, but you want to make the issue personal and you want to tie it back to you as the constituent, but you also want to tie it back to the politician because the politician is also a person and they have the same feelings and doubts and things that you have. And whatever you are in their office to talk about will also um, have <clears throat> a influence and a effect on them. I think that's another great key takeaway for um, anybody that's watching this, that it's more effective to come in to have a conversation rather than a blame game with boxing gloves on. <laughs> yes, I will admit that I know that politics for so many people, especially these days, can be heated. But we also, it, at the end of the day, have to realize that regardless of our race, our skin color, our hair color, our eye color, our 
ethnic background, our socioeconomics, our <clears throat> uh, religious or non-religious faith, we are all human. I have friends who are across the spectrum, mm -hmm. as I'm sure many people do, as well as family members too. I have, I have some family members who love the current president. I have current family members who loathe him, who hate him, who don't think he's done a good job. I think we, as a country, but also as a, <clears throat> as a minority group, and I'm only speaking slowly because I'm really trying to carefully bring my words out so that I don't create a hoopla. Um, we need to <clears throat> take into account that the world isn't always black and white. There aren't always two sides to every story. It's usually multiple sides. You can come to different decisions through different angles. You can look at it through the lens of a child. If you're a mother or father, you can look at it through the lens of a of a grandparent, if you're a grandparent, you can look at it through the world of, or sorry, uh, you can look at it uh, through the lens of a teenager if you're, you know, 13 and up. So there are multiple perspectives that you can, yeah. you can look at things through. And that's a great point because each stage of our life gives mm -hmm. us a different lens. And even, yeah. so even within ourselves, we have, um, we change. And mm -hmm. I think uh, I, I have met with my local representatives um, and look forward to working with our local county council officials on various things that are coming up. Um, and mm -hmm. so um, I have found that the best way to approach a representative or someone in, in political power or position uh, is to approach them with a conversation rather than let me tell you everything I want and I need and my struggles right. and my woes yeah. um, and what you need to do, but right. more, more having a collaborative conversation where it's a back and forth because you're mm -hmm. right. We may not understand the things that they have to navigate around in order to give us what we want. And so right. coming in more with an understanding, um, mindset and heart, I think would be a very effective way of making changes and, or at least imparting our own perspectives in that yeah. way, rather than coming full force. And there is a time and place for everything, as we could see in Crip Camp, that there oh, yeah. is a time and place to have to be a little bit more bold. Mm -hmm. There, 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 there is a time and place to have sit-ins and take over buildings and, you know, use more civil disobedience. And also what I found so moving in the Crip Camp movie was when Judy Human was speaking in court and you could tell she was doing everything she could to yeah. hold back her emotions. Mm -hmm. um, and emotions can... Uh, I think we often try to shy away from emotions when it comes to advocacy because we need to be perceived as strong. But in actuality, showing her emotions, I think, was a turning point for me anyway in watching the yeah. film. Where and, I and, see it, and it was definitely that for me too. Like I can, <clears throat> I can give you an example that I will like always remember um, and I'm dating myself, I guess, but I think it was like the 2008 campaign. Well, now I'm trying to remember, was it 2008 or was it 2016? I, I think it may have been the 2008 um, presidential campaign when Hillary was accused of like being wooden and not really being likable. And then there was, um, 
I think it was a town hall and a diner or a restaurant and somebody from the crowd asked her a question about how she deals with who she is as a politician and all the back and forth. And she got very emotional and almost started to cry. You didn't see it on camera, but you heard it in her voice and you saw it in an up close face shot. And I think that's what we need to have more of, frankly, in our politics and as humans. Because, yes, we can be strong-willed people, but strong-willed people also means being able to be emotional and being able to easily express your emotions. Yes. I that- think it yes, I think I think that's amazing and I I feel like that's a fresh perspective that our politicians if you're listening up need to be able to be okay with because I believe it takes more strength to be vulnerable than oh, to yeah. put on a face. People want to elect people that they feel connected with, that they mm-hmm. feel related to. We can all relate to each other on the human level. And yeah, oh yeah. I think that's really the, the, the big point that we're making is that politicians are people first, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And they happen yeah. to do politics for a living. Yeah. And it's important for us as people with disabilities to um, start seeing that there is a place for us in that political landscape, whether that mm-hmm. be a position of um, political power as a leader of your local area or state level or national level, but there is also um, a place for those of us that don't necessarily want to be in the limelight, but know that you have an influence and that you have a voice that can make a difference and you have Mm -hmm. power, even in the position you are now, to influence the representatives that are in the political positions. Um, And so I think that's the biggest takeaway that I want to um, give our viewers um, because those are practical things that we can do um, and approaching it from a place of let's have a conversation from human to human, not like you're this political giant up there and I'm a peon down here and I need to tell you what I feel. It's right. Hey, (laughs) or put it a different way you're, you know, you're a big bean bully or something. Right, right. And not coming at it as a defensive from a right. defense. It's, yeah. It's like, it's um, coming together to create understanding and empathy for mm-hmm. one another. Are there any final words or messages that you'd like people within the disability community to know in terms of advocacy within the political landscape there is a group out there uh, myself included who's working on a project that will hopefully help um, turn out more people with disabilities in <clears throat> uh, in November it's called brink election guide Okay, so Brink Election Guide, is there a place that people can learn more information about Brink? The website uh, is brinkapp.co. And um, also, if people go to the Apple App Store or Google Play or any place they get their mobile apps and they type in uh, Brink Election Guide, the uh, guide itself will pop up. And what does the guide do? Pretty much just has all the relevant information that you as a voter will need, Um, especially if you are someone who's being uh, discriminated against. So, you know, it'll have the numbers for the Office of Civil Rights, whether it's the national office in DC or the local chapters, wherever you live um, so that you can actually <clears throat> uh, report that you've been denied the right to vote. 
but it will also have like any other voting guide out there. It will have the names of the politicians that are the current ones running and all the positions on the issues. But it it is specifically targeted toward <clears throat> people with disabilities, but people who are fully able-bodied can use it as well. So it's basically a tool in which people with disabilities can learn more about the different positions that each of the candidates will be taking on various issues, along with any resources if they feel discriminated against to be able to go out and vote. And the whole goal of Brink is to increase the knowledge of people with disabilities so they feel more confident to go out and vote? That's definitely a big part of it. Okay. Um, but <laughs> the other reason for the creation of the Brink Election Guide is to actually make um, people with disabilities understand that their voices can be heard. I'll post the information regarding Brink um, on in the show notes so people mm -hmm. can follow up with that um, sure. afterwards. And that would be a great way to start getting involved. Um, sure. Mick, I want to thank you so much for giving us some key takeaways that hopefully can be practical applications that each of us do. One is mm -hmm. key persistence. Mm -hmm. um, being persistent with our local representatives and getting meetings. Um, the other is to approach our representatives from a place of creating understanding and empathy so that people, um, those politicians are able to hear us and we mm -hmm. can hear them and hope right. we can create a, uh, a partnership with them. I wanna thank you so much for sharing your perspective. Um, sure. And also for um, advocating for people with disabilities to get more involved. I think it's easy for us to say, oh, well, someone else will do it or um, feel like you are powerless and helpless in, in politics because it's somewhere out there in the realm of, of power. And, but we do have power. We have the personal power that we can exercise. And mm -hmm. I would like to find out from you, the viewer, if you're watching this right now, I'd love for you to comment below and tell us what are some key issues that you feel need to be addressed as the elections start coming up in November, um, locally and nationally. So please, uh, this is one place you could start now. After you watch this video, you can actually comment right now and tell us what are issues that are important to you that you feel need to be, to, to be addressed um, by our upcoming political uh, people in power. So um, I want to thank you, Mick, and I wanna remind you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe and share this video. And if you'd like to join my community and get in deeper conversation, you can do that on my Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to support us financially, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. So thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed.